What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and what's this we keep hearing about a new gate issue for the iPhone 6S. It's called Chipgate, and apparently some iPhone 6S and 6S Plus models are shipping with different versions of the A9 chip. There are two manufacturers, Samsung and TSMC. The TSMC version is supposedly getting better battery life, but is it true? In this video, I want to put that to the test and compare the results to the 6 and 6 Plus and see if we even get a promised battery life. I mean, is it the same or is it worse than the old model. Plus, I'll be showing you guys how to check if you're affected and if you're affected, what you can do and pretty much just want to show you guys what this whole thing is about. So first and foremost, I charged all of these devices to 100% and I ran a battery test using Geekbench. And just to show you guys that I do have the affected processors. So I do have the Samsung on the right and the TSMC on the left. The TSMC is reportedly the one with 20% better battery life. And Apple actually did respond to this issue. And I'll get to that in just a moment. But after running the tests, on the 6S Plus, I noticed there wasn't a difference. You know, I was confused. A lot of people were getting different results and yet in the most intense battery testing application, I didn't notice anything. And then I ran the same test on my 6 Plus and I discovered that you get worse battery life slightly on both 6S Plus models regardless of which processor you get. By the way, the TSMC is just a little bit larger. It's a 16 nanometer construction, 14 nanometer for the Sony. So then I ran a Geekbench to see if there's a speed comparison between these and the Sony is just slightly ahead. I mean, it's a smaller chipset but it gets a slightly better score in both single and multi-core score. So that was a little surprising to me. Let's go ahead and see how the 6S stood up in this test. And just to show you guys, again, I am running the TSMC on the left, on the right, Samsung. And you can actually see all of these statistics about how many devices were affected when you scroll down from this page. And I'll show you guys how to actually run this at the end. But anyways, so after running the battery test from MT on both of these chips, it was immediately apparent that on the iPhone 6S, there is a difference. So the Sony chip performed worse, and this is exactly 16% worse than the TSMC chip. Although it does get slightly better performance, the battery performance is worse. And the regular 6, which is brand new by the way, it's got a better score than the regular Sony. So not only are the Sony chips worse performing than the TSMC in this extreme battery test, they're actually worse than the iPhone 6 as well. Now, believe it or not, Apple quickly responded to these tests and they said that because we were using the processor under heavy load, which nobody would ever do, I mean, nobody ever plays games or runs intensive applications on their phone, there is actually only a two to 3% difference in real world usage. And I get it. I mean, nobody is really gonna be playing games all the time. So you really won't notice that, that much of a difference, but where it matters, when it matters, there will be a difference between 16 to 20%. Everybody's reporting that the TSMC chip is better. All right, so Apple's determined that there is a difference, even though it's small, but bigger under heavy load. The bigger difference is the charging heat or when you run intensive applications. So there's a considerable amount of difference, actually about 5% between the TSMC processor and Sony. The Sony runs really hot. I mean, I'm getting 92 degrees on the Sony, the TSMC getting about 85 to 87 degrees. So it's a lot cooler and that's really gonna reflect a lot. I mean, five extra degrees in your hand and jumps up to 89 here and 92 there. But the backside is where most of the heat transfers into your hand, so you're gonna notice it more there. And just for a point of reference, the 6 Plus gets 90 degrees, a happy medium between the Sony and TSMC. So I've shown you guys that the TSMC gets about 16 to 20% better battery life under heavy load. Now, Apple's trying to play this off by saying nobody's ever gonna be using their phone with heavy load all the time. Well, I mean, there will be a difference. If you're using your device, like actually using it, you will notice a considerable difference. 16 to to 20% using the processor full-time with the Geekbench test. But is there a performance difference on the regular 6S? Let's go ahead and find out. And there's a very noticeable difference here as well. The Sony, again, gets a slightly higher Geekbench score in both areas. It's a 14 nanometer chip versus 16 of the TSMC. So even though the battery performs worse on the Sony, it does have better performance in the actual Geekbench. Now, how to find out if you're affected and which chip you have. Now, at this point, which chip do you want? On the Sony, you get a slightly better performance on the TSMC, slightly better battery life by 16 to 20%. That's a considerable amount. So there's two ways to do this, just type in CPU identifier for 6S, or you can actually go to this actual URL and it will take you straight there. I'll put that down below in the description 
or you can just find it right here. And it's a very simple process for both 6S and 6S Plus. Just go to the website, click on the blue link, install. Sometimes the website is down and then click install one more time and then you'll get this icon on your home screen. Then go to settings. You wanna go to the profiles all the way on the bottom and in here you'll see this guy. Just click trust and the red trust icon. Then go back and it'll take a few moments but eventually you guys will get your processor information and it is accurate. Trust me, I have verified it with two methods and I actually haven't checked it on this phone. Let's see what I got. No, Samsung, dang it. <laughs> anyway, so I noticed, I think it's between 40 to 60% have Samsungs and the rest have TSMC. For some reason, it's not showing the statistics. Now, which processor is the more desirable one? Probably TSMC. Even though Apple claims there's only a 2 to 3% difference, it is more noticeable, especially when you do heavier, more intensive things like gaming or video editing. Now, if you find yourself affected by the Sony one, there's really nothing you guys can do. My personal device has the Sony, and I bet you wouldn't have even noticed a difference had this video not come to light or this information in general. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Just wanted to share this information with you, describe it, give you some more details about it. And there's really nothing to be afraid of. I mean, Apple made it pretty clear that it's not as big of a deal as everybody's making it, but hopefully it doesn't get worse. Have a great day, guys. Consider yourselves lucky if you have the TSMC chip.